So with the 3D print, obviously you always have to work them over. So when you have, so yeah, the bigger lumps, I would actually just use, use the chisel. Smaller ones. I use quite a rough sandpaper to work them over. Also break this edge a little bit, fill it later on. Didn't, do we have little red, you know, the red modeling wax? The really soft one, or perhaps you can use it. A small 3D printer, sometimes, yeah, you have to slice it up, obviously, as we do, and join it together. Um, but even, so yeah, here, you know, sometimes when you have a 3D print, you get situation where the print is kind of open. Um, obviously, I think it was printed like this. So it's the underhangs that are usually pretty bad, where they sort of start basically from the grid structure, you know, from its support, where the, the, where the, the slicing software pro provides a support structure and it has to kind of start printing into fairly thin air. So here is a mold Carrie made for her wax work, which she modeled by hand. And Basically, she just kind of poured it and then cut it open. For small pieces like this, that can be an okay method. So, coming back to the noodle holes. Yeah, this is good. Okay. Now, I might need a little bit more. Let's see. So, What I do is I create an even layer of clay. This will be the thickness of our silicon. Yeah. So that's why I made these tracks and you can use this as well. But this is your even layer of clay. What you do is you start attaching this and don't push it in, it can be quite loose, yeah? But just like this, it's good enough, yeah? So you don't want to push it too hard, yeah? And when you have something like this, it's quite useful to give yourself, so this is probably the middle, make you a simple, oops, a note like this, because this will be your half split. So make little notes. So what I do is you don't want to have, you want your mold surface really nice and smooth. So what I'm going to do now, around here, I make a lip. The molds to split exactly halfway here. Yeah, so this is where my mold splits. Bring me some clamps as well, please. Please. Is this yes. visible? Yes. Okay. Put it here. There. So I'm insulating this for the so, okay. so I'm just placing this somehow central. They go along here. Uh, Carrie, can you bring me two longer ones? The short ones are a little bit too short. Yeah. Perhaps if you find two more of these. No Thank you.
quite good to have heavy clumps. You can actually form this just by hand on top of it, but we, I use the pouring system, which is, you know, a little bit nicer. So, and basically the next level is I need to kind of basically half this, get the, get the plaster just along here. Mark. So I need to do three pours along here. So I mark this rim and you have to build up your plaster by hand. This is your lip. Make a mark. What you're aiming for. So what I do. So we need about at least a finger. Quite a bit. So, this is actually a box technique. If you don't have a box at home, you can kind of adjust the car. But the nice thing about this, Kerry, would it be possible or pull the, the, the view up? Just, just kind of hold on and adjust the camera there. You could sort of see in, into it, perhaps, like this. This. Oh. Yeah. So basically, this is how we align it. And this needs to be a little. Don't make your mold too big. Yeah? Just think about the argument here is always storage. You need to store these things. So make them big enough that they're strong enough, but small enough. They don't cause a lot of waste. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, it's you're a little bit heavy on those plants. Yeah, I, I didn't like, I, I didn't know this technique actually with the box, with these with adjustable boxes. Uh, you never stop to learn in the field of sculpture. Good. I want to touch that there. I pull this in now. Yeah. Now I position this. Wobble it a little bit. So now, hold on, I need, I need to, I need to add to this. I need to fill these corners up. Basically, to get, look, you need to just wobble it a little bit. Yeah. This needs to be really flat, yeah? So not, none of these. Now, let's wait until it's hard. And the next part will be, Kerry, you should know. What's the next the next step? Uh, like the lock. Locks. For that, we need a round. Can you bring me a round sling? We need to wait until this is hard. I'm just thinking now how we're going to do this.
And this is where we here need individual solutions. Yeah, I'm just going to be able to play ball here from here. Build this up. Get the clock clip all away. Build it, cut blocks here. Build this one up. Yeah. So, obviously, everybody, those who has done modes before, you need this is a fairly even surface. If you put these ones on, when you have nothing in there, the molds start sliding on top of each other. What you want, probably on the lobs. These little round indentations. Yeah. So this is what I've cut first. So what we have now. When, when the plaster is almost hard. Yeah, I'm just gonna make a few. I'm not gonna make one here because this is a separation. So I'm gonna make a few here, along here, and a few along here. Yeah. And then I'm gonna build the clay wall up here. For this side, take the clay wall away, cut a few locks here, and then pour this one out. Yeah. Then we've got this. Next step is. When we all have, when we have all our our plaster in place, we only remove, we take the the mold apart, but we only take one part off. So let's say we take this part off. So we click this on, we leave the rest in, and then we remove exactly. This area of clay. Yeah. And then we cut locks, we poke locks into this side of the clay mold. We remove this, we, we make little indentations. I always use the back of a brush, not such a slimy one. So imagine this is my base, and this is still clay. I have, I have removed. My molds and my 3D printers again. Let's put the 3D print in here. Can, can the camera see this as well? I'm just going to explain the next step. Why well, it's going to come here. Yeah. Okay, I'm just explaining the next step. So, when we have all our plaster molds, we take the plaster mold away and take the clay off, but not underneath, only what is in this part of the plaster mold. So we take the plaster mold off and remove the clay. This is probably sticking in here. We remove all the clay. And underneath, this is still clay. So we make a nice cut along our 3D print. Plaster, clay, 3D print. Then we take the back of a brush or something that is round and I make little indentations into my clay. And I've done that. And also save all the clay you have taken out of this part of the of this part of the mold. And you measure that. Yeah. We could do that in a in a, because it's liquid, I usually do it in a in a in a in a in a in a, in a uh, what is it called a jar with a, with a scale, not with a, with a with a liter. You know, you can measure how many liters, or pretty much also you can just weigh it. It's very similar to the weight of of silicon. Yeah. So this is how you can actually be very precise with the handling of your silicon. You weigh. How much clay you take out of this part of your plaster mold, you make the indentation to weigh it. Then you put your plaster mold back on. So this one, 
Now, this is your part of the plaster mold that doesn't have any clay in anymore. And this is now an empty space. Then we have the clay here. We can weigh that clay and produce exactly the same weight or perhaps 10% more in silicon. We mix the silicon and pour the silicon in. When we're done with that, we do the same for the other side. Now, we have our 3D print. So we've got our first silicon mold. It should sit in like this. Yeah. Hold on. We take the clay out of here. Now we have these bubbles here, you know, this these locks. We have our empty plaster mold. And now we can, and obviously we need to then isolate this part with Vaseline, otherwise it sticks together. And now we, we weigh the second part of our, of, of our clay. We produce the same amount in silicon and then pour the silicon in get our second mold. And you, if you have three parts, it's exactly the same. You just have one more step. Yeah. So you, I start with this one and that one, and then the lower part. Probably I could probably cast the bottom one first. I need to think about it. Yeah. So this is kind of a very methodical way of making silicon molds, but this is the proper way. This is a proper professional way. Yeah. Rather than just kind of pour a huge lump and then cut it open. I mean, that's I mean, it's, it's very close to cutting the locks now. Perhaps you can, you can just, yeah. so you just go like this. They don't have to be too deep. And don't wait too long with this. Make another one here. Yeah, if you wait too long, you can't do it with this. You just need to find the right sort of spot. Okay. So, Gary, next step. What do you think? What's the next step you should know? the wall first. No. Vaseline. Vaseline. Don't forget the Vaseline. Otherwise you're gonna you end up in trouble. Yeah. So you cover this in Vaseline because if you pour more plaster onto this and you don't insulate it, the plaster will stick to the plaster that is uninsulated, and you will not be able to separate it. So we use, in this case, Vaseline. Um, Gary, could you cut me a few flat, flat pieces? Yeah, try to kind of, you know, this is, although you work with plaster, plaster tends to be a sort of a messy business. Try to work, keep your fingers clean, yeah, and work work precisely. So yeah, I'm just gonna make uh, run it along here halfway. So I want the plus exactly halfway. We need more. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We need more. Or keep it quite flat.
sure. So yeah, mold making is not something you can do in a hurry. Um, it is quite a labor intensive business. Getting hungry, it's so lunch time. <laughs> Build a little support here because this will. I don't think I'm going to fill this up. I fill it up and then I just drag it up because I don't want a huge lump of mold. I just basically build the mold up to this level. Basically, all I need is it's good to have this as a base, but you don't need to fill these entire corners up. You can, but it's not necessary. What I will do is I pour it up to this level. Then just kind of build this up here, you know, along here. Let's just go up here. Hey, Carrie, could you could you mix me plaster? Yes. Uh, half a, uh, about this much. Oh. Yeah. Do you have time this afternoon to do this? Or? You need to go over. Hmm? What do you mean you don't know what you're doing this afternoon? Lunch. Yeah, lunch, but what are you doing after lunch? Are you coming back for it? Huh? What? It's just, you know, I ideally I wanna uh, next week so start the Well, you know, I don't know. I mean you could do it next week. Uh or but you can also come, you know, in other days. I mean, you want, all your classes are online, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Right. Oh. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, you, what I'm saying is do this in your own time. You, you know, I will try to um, edit the video to the essential parts. But um, I think when you do this, if you can do it, you probably need a bit of help because it's easy to think, oh yeah, this is not so complicated, but quite easy to miss a step or something, you know. Also the handling of material probably you will, you know, you have never mixed plaster and stuff. So uh, it's all the way. Uh, things are, Carrie you know, is sort of familiar with, with like stuff like that, you know, and then it makes it easier. You know, but when you've done it first time, it's always can be. 
Yes, sir. There. And all I need to build now up is this area. I don't really need this area. I just need it around here, and I wait for that for the for the plaster to be hard, so almost hard. And I can just basically come come up and mold it around here. Run it a Huh? Yeah. <laughs> the English is good. What 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 is the problem? <laughs> so I just wonder why. So. All the way up. Basically, what I don't I said that already. I you could obviously pour it up to here. I just don't want my my mold to be too heavy. Basically, all you need is a mold about this thick. You know. Plus, it's quite a stable material. Yeah. You know, this is only this thick. I don't want my, my mold to be too heavy. So I'm just basically, I don't know. You know, I kind of grew up in a, you know, I started, I think we are very, very lax with the handling of material and consumption here because materials are the cheap. When I was a student, I had to pay for my materials like you have. But we got far, far less for it, you know? So we had, you know, when we bought a plaza bag, it was an investment. When we bought silicon, silicon was hugely expensive. You know, I could sort of like every semester, perhaps just about afford one liter of silicon. So it was like gold dust, you know? So you naturally, you know, become sort of a little bit more clever with you because you don't, you don't need to fill this up. All you need is a layer yeah you know because that all all this needs to do is hold this in place yeah so but I, obviously i mean i can i'm going to throw this away uh 
course you can do that, but it's not necessary. Yeah. I like I like my molds to be nice and slim because uh, yeah. So now I need to just wait. I want to explore this whole area up here. Timing with laughter, timing is everything. I think it goes about now. When I've, when I've done this, will, I, I, I finished this this afternoon here. Um, so I will be around. Are so you around this afternoon, Terry? Yes. Uh, yeah, you go, you go home. Yeah. I will, I will edit this to probably Friday. Perhaps I can get it done today. I'm not 